Hi everyone, I'm here with the part 2 of creating the steampunk tobacco pipe and in this part we want to start painting and texturing the pipe in Substance Painter and add it in Unity and add some particle system in Unity to the pipe so that we can have some steams coming out from the pipe. In the part 1 we created all the low poly meshes and added some details, some, uh, for example some uh, sheets and nails on them so that we can bake it uh, on the low poly mesh in Substance Painter. Let me show you the layer. We added uh, these sheets and nails to the model and we will bake them in the low poly mesh but before doing that we need to unwrap the low poly mesh and for unwrapping we will use 3D Studio Max. So let's start to unwrap that. Uh, I will select this mesh and add a UVW mapping layer so that I can clear all the UVW data uh, till now in the mesh because I want to start unwrapping from the base. And now let's add an unwrap UVW map. So I will use unwrap UVW map and uh, let's uh, start to have some seams on the model so that I can uh, uh, unwrap it with uh, adding some seams and quicking and pe uh, peeling the model. So let's uh, start the work. I will select these edges again, these edges here, this part. And let's continue selecting the right places. And let's go down in the modify and click on the create seams from the selection. I want uh, some other seams again. For example, I want some uh, seams in here in here all right fine let's separate this part good and uh, again Let's add some seams in here. Fine. And I think, oh no. Let's uh, select these edges again. And I think it's okay. And I can click on the quick peel. And here I have the whole the model unwrapped. So let's select all the uh, clusters in here and click on the unwrap in here so that we can relax them. And let's rotate, it, uh, rotate them in the right direction. I think there is something wrong uh, with the unwrapping in here. So let me see what's wrong with that. Yes, I need some seams in here too. Click on the brick and let's quick build that again. Yes, it's fine. And I'm moving in here, let's select them. There we go. Again. And let's continue the job. And after that, I can pack UV. All right, fine. Let's end the isolate the selection and select the other parts. For example, I will select this part and start to unwrap it again. Before doing that, I will add a UVW map layer to start unwrapping from the base. Okay. Now let's select the places that I want to add seams.
again. Select them too. And I think we are ready for quick filling. So let's do that. I think everything is okay. Let's select all the clusters and relax them. Very easy. And it's time to unwrap the wires in here. Let's select the wires and attach them together. And isolate my selection. I don't want these polygons in the start and the last place of these wires. Good. And let's add a UVW mapping player. Unwrap UVW map. And add some sims again. Fine. Alright, let me attach all the model together. We have something like that. Let's add uh, unwrap UVW mapping so that we can pack all the UVs together. So that they cannot be overlapped. Now they are not overlapped and all the uh, places are uh, uh, all the clusters are packed together. We have all the clusters here. We can scale uh, scale up some clusters so that we can use this uh, this um, uh, empty uh, space. So let's let me scale some of them that are important. Let's 
and again let's click on pack uv and here uh, I will uncheck the rescale clusters so that we can have something like that let's scale it again okay now I think it's fine let's reset the x4 convert it to editable poly again and uh, now we can uh, export my tobacco pipe as an FBX format and before exporting we can add a material to the tobacco pipe so let's add a standard material to the tobacco pipe let's make it a standard there it is I rename it tobacco pipe and even we can rename my mesh to underline low and let's export it again Alright, everything is ready for painting in Substance Painter. Le uh, so let's open my model in Substance Painter and start painting and painting the textures. And uh, before doing that, uh, I must uh, import uh, export this part again. So let's export all the model uh, in here and. Uh, okay, it's fine. Let's export them. I don't need these parts no I don't need these parts let's delete them and let's export them tobacco pipe meat there it is now let's sew some painter to start baking and texturing the pipe. Having unwrapped the low poly model in 3D Studio Max and export the FX version of the low poly and the mid poly, it's time to open in Substance Painter and start baking and painting. For doing that, I will go to the file and click on new and I will leave the template as it is PBR Metal Graphics is a good idea and in the file I will click on select and in this time I will load my low poly model and leave all the parameters that they are and click on OK. And here I have the low poly model in here and it's time to bake uh, uh, some maps on that. By baking process I will extract data from the 3D dimensional model, some example data like normal map, like ambient occlusion, curvature and other things like that and project them in a 2D map. Uh, and for normal map you can either use a high poly model and bake its data to the low poly one or um, uh, or use uh, the low poly model as uh, the high poly if you haven't any high poly version of the model and here because I have a mid poly version of this model for the sheets and the nails on that uh, I will load uh, uh, I will load the mid poly as the high poly so for doing that I will go to the texture set setting here and in the mesh maps let's click on the make uh, mesh maps uh, and as you see here, you will have all the maps that you will have after baking normal, world space normal, ID, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and thickness. Because I haven't set any ID for my model, I will leave the ID unchecked. And because I have anything that uh, need uh, the thickness, for example, SSS, I will leave it uh, unchecked again. And in the comment tab, I will change the baked mesh maps uh, output size to 2K. And here I will load my high definition mesh that uh, is my mid poly. I will load it and let's go down and in the anti-aliasing I select the 4x4 for my work and I think everything is okay and it's time to bake the maps. Okay, baking is finished and I have my uh, sheets and the nails uh, in this place and this place in my low poly uh, model too and it's time to add materials to the model and paint the model on the uh, several places of this shape 
For doing that, uh, I will go to the layer here. Here I have an empty layer that I don't want, uh, don't want it anymore. So I will delete that. And in the material, I want uh, a wood material for this place. Let me show you for this place and this place. I want a wood material. So in the shelf and in the material, I will go and find the wood. And I think wood walnut is good for my work. So I will drag and drop it into my layers window. And as you see, the wood is given to hold the model. And I don't want to be like that. So for uh controlling the place of the woods in the model i must use the mask tools in substance painter and for doing that at first i will click the folder and call it woods and uh, then let's uh, drag all my woods um, uh, materials in uh, in the woods uh, folder and let's add a mask to the wood uh, and add a black mask and it's time to exclude some places that I want to have the wood material from this black mask. And uh, for doing this, I will select my black mask here and let's go to the polygon fill. And uh, in the fill mode, I think the uh, easiest way to exclude the places is the, using the UV chunk for this model. And I use a white color because I want to exclude some places from the black. And let's select the places that I want to have the wood material, something like that. And I think it's okay. The other thing I must fix is uh, change the amount of rotation. So, uh, so uh, I will select the wood uh, material here and in the properties field, I will change the amount of rotation so that I have the, a better result here. And uh, as you see, uh, the resolution of my texture is not so fine. So for correcting that, I will go to the texture set setting here and let's change the size to something like 2K. And as you see, everything is fine now and the material is flat and I want to add some normals and heights to the material. And for doing that, I will go to the material here in the properties field and uh, enable the height and let's check that the normal be enabled too. And in the technical parameters of this material, I will change uh, and increase the amount of normal intensity and uh, amount of height range so that I have uh, a material that has some height and normals on it something like that and i think it's more better inside the pipe the rotation of the wood is not so good and inside the pipe i want to have darker material so i must exclude the inside the part and use another material same this material but darker amount uh, and uh, change the rotation separately and for doing that i will add a mask to this wall wall not again and exclude the places that i want this material to be give to, uh, given to so let's select this mask and uh, by polygon fill select the places that i want this mask to be given to and let's uh, copy this material because i want this material for the uh, inside of the uh, inside of the pipe too so let's remove my previous uh, uh, mask and add another mask and select inside this time and let's select uh, the material of the inside and change the rotation and as you see the rotation is okay and it's time to make it darker and even increase the amount of roughness too right okay the wood places uh, is uh, created and now it's time to create the iron sheets and the nails and for doing that I will create uh, another folder called it metal and in the materials let's select let's find and select iron galvanized and put in the metal and again let's add some mask to the folder and exclude some places from the black mask something like that I like that all right let's go and select the iron galvanized uh, to go to the properties of that because I want to change the metal color to add some warmer amounts of color now it's more better and I want to make it more rough so make it more or something like that and let's change the color a little bit more to have a better effect something like that 
And uh, in the places of the nails and uh, in the corners, I want some metal rust too. So for doing that, I will go to the materials again and find this time the metal rust. Uh, and uh, I will uh, put the rust fine just above the iron galvanized to have something like that. And it's time to add a mask so that I can have the rust just in the place of the nails and in the corners so for doing this i will go to the smart mask here and use the cavity rust and drag and drop it in the rust fine i have something like that and i can change the amount of rust by going to the uh, mask and mask editor and uh, change the amount of global balance and i think it's better to decrease the global contrast too to have something nice like this okay now it's time to let's add this part to the metals so let's add this part okay fine and it's time to add a black plastics uh, to the places like these wires this place this place and this place so for doing this i will create another folder called it plastic 01 it's so easy to work with Sousa's Painter and it's very, very powerful software that you can work with. So here's plastic rainy, some materials like plastic rainy or maybe use the plastic mate here. I love this. And let's add a black mask again and select the places I want to exclude. something like that I like this and change the color of the material to black or a dark gray material near the black and for this part I want another plastic material so let's create another folder called it plastic O2 and this time I will use the plastic cable braided so let's copy that to the plastic o2 and let's use the mask again and let's change the colors so for the first color i will use a light color something like that and for the color or two I will use a darker color something like this fine and let's enable the normal to have something like this and let's go to the technical parameters and uh, increase the height range too and decrease the normal intensity a little bit okay it's decreased now and let's increase a roughness just a little bit fine now the steampunk uh pipe is finalized now let's go to the mode and in the rendering mode to see what i have and let's change the background let's go to display setting and in the environment map let's change the background so i i want to use in the studio environment something like that and here's my final result of my steampunk pipe in substance painter and i think everything is okay and it's time to export some maps to use it in unity and for doing that i will go to the file and in the export textures uh, let's select uh, in the config let's select the unity unity 5 standard metallic as you see uh, and uh, uh, let's go to the configuration and as you see the unity 5 configuration will give me the albedo transparency metallic smoothness normal and emission maps 
but I want to have uh, some other maps some uh, for example some AO maps and even some height maps maps is to uh, use the create button in here let's uh, for example for ambient occlusion I need a gray so let's create a gray and let's copy this text here and let's click on paste and rename it to AO and use it the uh, ambient occlusion gray channel and another gray channel for height and let's drag and drop from height to this button and use the gray channel now I can have the height map and AO maps by exporting my uh, maps with Unity 5 standard metallic. As you see, uh, let me change that. Now, as you see in the Unity 5 standard metallic, I will have AO and height too, and I can change the, my output size. I will select the 4K for my output size, and the format of PNG is okay for the Unity standards and uh, let's uh, select your folder here and after selecting folder it's time to export maps all right the maps are exported and it's time to go to the unity and uh, load the fbx model uh, low poly model in unity and use the maps to create a material for the pipe so let's go to unity now I am in Unity and I want to import my model in Unity and use the maps I created in Substance Painter to create a Unity standard PBR material and give the maps to the Unity material and use it in my model. For doing that, I will go to uh, my assets folder. Here it is, my assets. And let's create some folders in the assets. For example, I will create like a folder called it FPX and another folder called it materials. And in asset, I have three folders, FX, maps, and materials. Everything is okay. In maps, I will copy and paste all the maps I exported from Substance Painter in the maps folder in the assets. So let's go here and uh, let's copy all the maps exported. I put it in the maps folder. And in the FX, I will put the low poly model in the fx folder so i will uh, use the tobacco pipe uh, low in the fx folder and let's go to the unity and let uh, the unity to process the changes there it is now i have the fx version of the model so i will load it in my scene and put it in the center of my scene there it is and let's go to material folder and create a material and call the tobacco pipe and uh, give the ma uh, material to the model and uh, while this material is selected and I have its parameters on the right side here I will select the maps folder one click on the maps to select the maps folder and I will put the maps to the right place in the material uh, material properties. For example, I will use the albedo transparency in the albedo place. So let's use it in the albedo place. I will use the AO map in the occlusion map. I will use the height in the height place and I will use the metallic smoothness in the metallic place. And I will use the normal map in the normal map place. And let's click on the fix now. And as you see, I have uh, my tobacco, uh, tobacco pipe with the maps I created in Substance Painter and everything is okay and I like this. And it's time to create a particle as a steam coming out from the pipe. And for doing that here, I will create a effect and particle system, something like that and put it in the, just inside the pipe. So let's move it and put it inside the pipe, something like that and uh, i have another material for the uh, steams so for doing that i will go to the materials again and create a new material and call it the steam 
and uh, let's change the shader to particle system so let's go to the particles and choose the additive uh, i love uh, additive or maybe uh, additive soft is okay uh, and uh, i have a texture place here uh, so i will go to photoshop to create my texture and for doing that i will create a new and i think the 512 by 512 for the wide and height is okay and uh, let's add a black background uh, and uh, i want uh, to select a sphere so i will enable my uh, circular selection here and a feeder of 17 is good i think and let's create a circle in the screen in a new layer something like that i think it's fine now i will use the smudge tool to add some distortion in the sphere created something like that and uh, even i can use my eraser tool with a little opacity to add some dark areas something nice like this I use the smudge again to add more distortion I think it's okay for the steam I don't want to go further so uh, I will delete the background so that I have a transparent background here and I will save my PNG type of my work in the maps in the asset folder of my project so I will call it steam there it is let's go back to unity and while I have the material properties in the right side I will one click on the maps and here I will drag and drop the steam in the texture place of my uh, steam material and I will use the material steam material in my particle system to have something like that okay it's fine now let's select the particle system here move it inside more and let's change its uh, parameters a little bit to have a better uh, result for example here in the particle system I have uh, uh, some start size so I will change it to something like 4 to have a nice steam but uh, the angle of the, my steam is too much and I must uh, make it uh, make it less so for doing that I will go to the shape here I, the shape cone is okay for my work because it's like a cone uh, and it's okay and let's change the angle to something like 10 love it and let's decrease the radius to something like 0.5 let's move it even less and something like that better now let's go in the particle system and decrease the start size to 3 to have a better result something like that and I want some distortion while moving up so let's go and here select the noise of something like that it's more beautiful and uh, let's uh, have a color over uh, lifetime so let's enable the color over lifetime and change this gradient color so for the first I want some warmer tints of color so I will use a warmer color for that something like that make this steam a little bit warmer something like this and a little bit darker good and uh, while going up I want to make it dark something like that it's better now let's go up and uh, in the particle system 
I want to change the start speed to something like 3 good or maybe less 2 and uh, let's see what I have let's add some randomized rotation and decrease the duration and start lifetime nice I can change the frequency a little bit and try other numbers And even you can enable the collision here. If you add any colliders, but I don't want to do that. And uh, let's change the environment. And for changing the environment, uh, I will uh, go in my materials again. And let's create another material. So let's create another material. I called it environment. Okay, it's okay. And let's change the shader to skybox. And I want a panoramic. Alright, fine. And let's use Substance Painter Studio Environment for my work. For doing that, I will go to my Substance uh, Painter Environment folder. And I will use uh, the Studio HDR here. For example, I will use the Studio 3. So I will copy the Studio 3 and put it in my Maps folder. So let's open the Assets and go to Move Maps. And copy the HDR into the maps there it is and I will use this studio in my texture place as you see and then go to the window uh, and lighting setting there it is and here in the skybox uh, material I will use the environment material there it is now I can change the amount of exposure or rotation Let's put a camera in the right place and click on play to see what I will have. I can decrease the amount of steam because it's coming out from here. So let's decrease start size something like 2 and I think it's okay alright this tutorial is finished now and I think you enjoyed this tutorial uh, I tried to explain all the process from the modeling to texturing and using the particle system for the pipe 
uh, you can use a better smoke for that because I was uh, capturing the tutorial and I wanted to make it uh, uh, more uh, with more uh, I want to make it with more speed uh, you can make it better the uh, steam is too dense uh, for this pipe and uh, you can even uh, have a better result for the noise in the uh, in this place because I don't want to uh, change it anymore and at the end of this tutorial i have uploaded this uh, steampunk pipe in my sketchfab uh, and you can access it for free and use it in your project if you want by downloading it by going to sketchfab.com ali 3d king and here is the steampunk pipe here and except this steampunk pipe you will have access to other models and some of them are free to download and you can use it in your project for free and if you're interested in a steampunk asset or you are working on a game that you need a steampunk props uh, we have recently added a new asset uh, for a steampunk age called the steampunk light asset for unity in our asset store that you can purchase it in access to many things for steampunk lights for example about 16 pre-created steampunk uh, lights for your projects or about 53 standard objects that you can use either in unity or other applications and gives you flexibility to create your own light or even extend your 16 pre-created light to create a new one and we have created some tutorials for using this asset uh, in youtube that you can access it by clicking on these uh, buttons here in our asset store or by going to my youtube channel here and uh, here are my uh, steampunk uh, tutorials i have created for this asset uh, and in these tutorials i will show you how to use the standard objects to create your new light and use it in uh, unity without any knowledge uh, of uh, texturing unwrapping or creating any material because we have created all of them for you before and you just need to assemble the standard part uh, parts to create new objects and uh, by clicking on any of these tutorials here you will access the link in the asset store that you can go to the asset store and purchase this uh, asset if you need uh, and if you want it for your projects and this is a very useful asset for the people who want to work uh, on a steampunk age uh, games or want to use and want to have a steampunk uh, lights I hope this tutorial was useful for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Good luck.